Welcome to this forum. First, let me say, I hope this series will encourage you to share a short 10 to 30 minute presentation of your own in the future. Whether you have found some shortcut in learning a task for class or just want to share something of interest with others, this is the forum for you. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about Camtasia. Camtasia has a nice built-in recorder. You can record part of the screen, the whole screen, and up to two web cameras at the same time. This will allow you to record your audience, yourself, and your desktop. But I want to speak more specifically about Camtasia Studio. Once you open your program, you should see a window that looks very similar to this. You notice that uh, Camtasia is divided into three separate panels. The clip bin, the playback window, and the timeline. The clip bin will hold all of your media, whether it's a PowerPoint or still media like uh, JPEG or GIF or TIFF, an MP4. So let's just pop this little video into the clip bin and then we're going to drag it down to our timeline for editing. And we'll scooch it up to the very beginning. One of the first things to note is this slide bar. This will tell you where you're at in your audio video track and you'll be able to visualize it in the playback window. The slide bar has both a left and right handle. This will allow you to select a section of your audio and video for either editing or just for playback. One thing to note before you edit the audio video track is that you can lock the audio and video together so it's not editable at all or you can unlock it. Reason being is because you can add more tracks above your, your original track and you may not want to edit the original track at all. The tracks on top are the ones that are displayed uh, first before the tracks on the bottom. All right, so let's uh, let's find a little spot here in our video. We're going to do a scene cut. All right, there looks like a good spot. We'll split the track. And there you can see we have two separate tracks. Now let's go to our transitions. And let's select cube rotate. And we'll drag that down to the timeline. So now when you come to that spot in the video, you'll see a transition from one scene to the next. Now I've found for some reason with my software, I don't know if it's true with yours, that not all these transition scenes are working. Next thing we want to do is let's uh, edit the audio. We want to pump up the volume just a little bit. Notice I just did the first half this track, not the second half. But let's say I want to do, uh, do a fade in. Select starting point ending point of the fade in and there it will transition the audio from low to high volume. Control Z will always undo your last item or 
you can just simply remove your audio points. This will remove all of your audio points though. Next thing let's do, let's put in a, uh, a call out. So a call out like this arrow here will just bring attention to a specific point in the in the screen for your audience and you can make that longer or shorter we wouldn't want the call out to last more longer than it should so let's remove it right about there If you wanted to make your call out animated, you can do that it's by going to uh, Visual Properties, and we'll say Animate, Add Animation to the Call Out. Before we do that, though, we'd like to, you know, start off the screen. So we'll pan out, move the cursor or the call out above the screen. Click Add Animation. You'll see down here on the timeline, we now have a second arrow. This is the animation arrow. We'll make that as long as we need it. To actually add the animation, though, you need to double click this end of the arrow, and that will put it in the add mode. And we'll just simply uh, bring our call out onto the screen. Move it around a bit. And we'll see what that looks like in playback. You can do some fun things with call outs. That was pretty long and pretty slow, so we can shorten that up. Let's say we wanted to do a pan and zoom. Like we want to possibly zoom, zoom in on this screen right here. We go to pan and zoom up here to this window. We'll just zoom in. That creates this arrow on the timeline. See what that looks like. Again, you can make that longer or shorter. To bring the pan and zoom back out, Double click that and it goes back out to full screen and it adds a second arrow. We'll just snug that back up to the first. Awesome. 
if you're going to do something for a class, uh, you might want to do closed captionings. And you can either just start typing in your closed captions. If you notice, they'll uh, space themselves out in four second intervals. If you wanted to edit your closed caption timeline, you can merge previous uh, captions together. When you go to play them back, you'll see them on the both on the timeline and they show up in the video. Once you get everything you want in your video and you want to actually produce and share it, go up to produce and share. You can select from several different options, video size and format, whether it's just the MP4 or you can produce and share to some of the network services. or you can add custom settings. If you go down to here, uh, there are several options. Uh, just audio only, quick time. If you're doing like a, a embedded file, you can do smart player in a flash format. Uh, this gives you some nice options if you have a long video and you want to have a index that they can click on and it'll go immediately to certain search words in your closed captioning. Or certain positions in the video. Um, you can produce and share just a animated GIF. You can change video settings, the size settings, audio settings. Uh, generally your audio quality doesn't really have to be all that great. The higher the bit resolution, the larger the file size. For this, I'm just going to do a 720p, say next, um, that's fine, and it will render the video. And that's all there is to it. Time for questions and answers.